Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I am going to take you through different key Azure and AWS services that are available in storage, network and compute areas. By the way, this is going to be a very high level overview. In this course, we have dedicated sections for these areas where I am going to take you through in bit more detail. But at this point of time, let me take you through at a very high level. In terms of storage, if you want to store unstructured data in the cloud, such as documents, media files, or snapshots of your virtual machines, etc. Then you can use S3 from AWS perspective and you can use blob storage in Azure. And in case if you want to have a shared file storage that you want to mount on multiple virtual machines within the cloud, then you can use Elastic File Service from AWS perspective and you can use file storage from Azure perspective. Similarly, if you want to create a volume, and attach that volume to one of the virtual machines in AWS or Azure. From AWS perspective, you can use Elastic Block Store and from Azure perspective, you can use Disk. And if you want to archive the data within the cloud, then you can use Glacier from AWS perspective. From Azure perspective, they have hot and cold access tires, but uh, they are not as sophisticated as Glacier but Microsoft is coming up with archive storage. It is in preview, it's not yet released, but very soon they are going to release it. However, I feel Glacier is more sophisticated in AWS compared to archive in Azure. And in terms of hybrid cloud storage, i.e. in other words, if you want to store the most active and most accessed data within your on-premise data center, and if you want to move infrequently accessed data into the cloud, then from AWS perspective, you can use Storage Gateway. Using Storage Gateway, you can move files, you can move volumes or cache into the cloud. Similarly, from Azure perspective, you can use backup in order to take the backup of your virtual machines and others into the cloud. And also you can use Store Simple, which is a SAN level hybrid cloud solution from Microsoft. And in terms of hybrid cloud storage, I believe Store Simple and Azure Backup is a bit more sophisticated compared to Storage Gateway. That's what I feel. You may disagree with me in some of these aspects of comparison, but uh, from my experience, I think Store Simple and Backup is more sophisticated compared to Storage Gateway. So these are the five key AWS and Azure services that are available in storage. So let's go to the network now. In network, if you want to create your own network in the cloud, then you can use AWS VPC, which stands for Virtual Private Cloud. And in Azure, you can use Virtual Network. Using any one of these services, you will be able to create a logical isolated space in the cloud where you can deploy virtual machines, etc. And both VPC and Virtual Network are the fundamental building blocks in AWS and Azure respectively. And coming to the next one, if you remember correctly, we have discussed about edge locations in AWS and similarly CD and POP locations in Azure. Using CloudFront, you will be able to deliver high bandwidth content into these edge locations, which will reduce the latency in terms of the content delivery to the end user. When it comes to Azure, the similar functionality can be achieved using CDN. CDN stands for Content Distribution Network. And one important thing in cloud computing is how you can establish the connectivity between your on-premise data center and cloud. When it comes to AWS, you can connect your on-premise data center with AWS cloud using a site-to-site -site VPN. However, the site-to-site -site VPN will be over internet. But in case if you want to have a direct connectivity, a private connection between AWS data center and your on-premise data center, then you can use direct connect. The similar functionality in Azure can be achieved using Express Route. And the next one is Route 53 and Traffic Manager. Using Route 53 in AWS, you can able to register the domain and you can able to health check your endpoints and also you can do a DNS failover also. These days, DNS failover is very popular when it comes to DR. Basically, you can constantly monitor the endpoints and if one of the endpoints is down at the DNS level itself, you can route the traffic to a different endpoint. And the similar functionality you can achieve using Traffic Manager. But when it comes to DNS level load balancing, i.e. DNS failover and all those stuff, I believe Traffic Manager is a bit more sophisticated when compared to Route 53. 
And in terms of delivering high availability solutions, you can use elastic load balancing when it comes to AWS and you can use load balancer in Azure. There are other types of high availability solutions also. For example, within elastic load balancing, there is an application load balancing also. And in Azure, you have application gateway. So there are, there are quite a few other services that you can use, but uh, these are the key services in network area. And the next one is compute. In compute, using AWS EC2, you can deploy virtual machines into the cloud. Similarly, you can use Azure virtual machines in order to deploy virtual machines. There are different aspects to it, like auto scaling, scale sets and all those stuff, which I'm going to take you through in a bit more detail. But uh, at a very high level, AWS EC2 will do the same job of Azure virtual machine also. Both are similar to each other when it comes to creating and managing virtual machines on the cloud. And similarly, container service, you can use AWS ECS for uh, creating container service. Similarly, you can use Azure container service also. And the third one, when it comes to deploying web applications on the cloud, you can use Elastic Beanstalk in AWS and you can use Azure cloud service in Azure. I know some people might think, you know, Elastic Beanstalk is more or less similar to Azure app service, but I find Azure app service is bit more sophisticated when compared to Elastic Beanstack. So I would say Elastic Beanstack is more similar to the cloud service. And coming to the fourth one, which is Lambda and functions. If you want to implement a piece of code without worrying about where to deploy and the underlying versions, patching and all those stuff, then you can use AWS Lambda or Azure functions. Using both of them, you'll be able to write a piece of function and deploy in the AWS cloud or Azure cloud. And you can call that function from anywhere in the world as long as you're connected to internet. So you don't need to worry about underlying platform, where you are deploying, uh, what is the CPU memory utilization and all those stuff. You can fully concentrate on delivering the business logic and leave the infrastructure and the other stuff to AWS or Azure. AWS Lambda and Azure functions are quite popular these days and I believe future lies there in serverless architecture. And finally, if you want to perform high performance parallel computing, then you can use AWS Batch and also you can use Azure Batch. So that's it for this lecture. We have went through different Azure and AWS services in storage and network and compute areas. If you have some time, join me in the next lecture where I'm going to take you through different Azure and AWS services in databases, application services and security. See you in the next lecture.